Good afternoon, everybody. It's April 15th, 2022. Um, I really want to drive the beat today. Um, it starts and idles perfectly, making progress. <clears throat> but for some reason, uh, off idle to like 2,000 or 2,500 RPM, it's very fluttery and stumbly and... I don't know. I have to check the air fuel mixture again. I think it's just the air fuel mixture. Or maybe the carbs need to be synchronized. So I'm going to start it, let it warm up. And here are my tools. Don't need many tools. This I do last. This is the, uh, just let you know how much air the carbs are uh, sucking in. You want that to be the same for each carb and I have some small screwdrivers flatheads to adjust the uh, air fuel mixture screws you know that adjust the jet and those uh, screws are on the left side of the front carb and on the right side of the rear carb so that's really all you need you start it let it warm up I'm gonna do that in a second and we'll see what we can do hopefully you know I want to drive this today I actually bought the air filters for it. It never came with air filters. And, uh, can't put the air filter housings on, the carbs. Can't put them back on until I have the carbs adjusted. You know, you have to do things in the right order. Incidentally, here's what the interior looks like of my 72 MGB. I guess it's like flying a Spitfire. That's what it reminds me of driving this thing. Not that I know what flying a Spitfire is, but there's my little battery in the back there. Interior is very nice. I have a big opening here. Oh, sorry. This is the other side. Somebody cut out some of the metal on the front of this. So I get a lot of fumes coming through here. Oh boy. Can't imagine how many exhaust fumes are sucked from the back tailpipe through this thing when you're driving. But with the top off, it's probably not so bad. With the top down, rather. So there you go. Okay, let's get to work. Too much fooling around here. Okay, so here's a close-up, and when I lift this, watch, you'll see. Let me just... In there. There's the needle. And the jet. It's hard to see. In there is the needle and the jet. Oh, my big finger's in the way, but there's the needle going down into the jet. And, uh, this screw in here adjust the height of the jet okay so I'm gonna bring them to the starting position and then uh, turn the screw to starting position is when the top of the jet is even with the with the bridge at least that's what I learned on YouTube and then Two full turns of the screw inward will uh, lower the jet the appropriate amount, and that should be a good starting point for both carbs. So we'll give it a shot. Okay, I just uh, what I did was I turned the screw, and you could see. Let me put the light on. Hold on. Oh, you could just see that the jet is even with that bridge. And there's the needle. Let me put the light on, hold on. Come on, we have high technology here. Where's my torch? There we go, okay. So I turn this screw counterclockwise to lean that, to lean it out. There you go, hold on. Here we are inside the carburetor. If I can just get this focused. 
okay so barely just see the top of the jet there it's even with the bridge I'm just going by somebody's YouTube video here to the same with the back now we do full two full two full turns with this with the with the uh, mixture screw I'm just gonna do two clockwise full turns and the jets gonna go down that will give me a nice a richer mixture remember in clockwise is uh, rich counterclockwise is leaning it okay okay it's a little hard to see but you can see the jet has dropped a little bit below the surface of that bridge there so that's two full clockwise turns of the screw of the idle adjust uh, air fuel adjustment screw two full turns same with the rear carburetor then I'm gonna start it let it warm up then I'm gonna do the piston test where you lift the piston a little bit and if your air fuel is correct it should increase rpms and then immediately go back to lower rpms normal rpms if it increases it and it stays increased you're too rich if it just flutters and lowers rpm then you're too lean okay we're in the we're in the mgb we're in neutral my foot's on the brake start her up pull a choke out Choke is out and locked, as you can see. Fuel pump is spooling up. If you have the original pump, it, you'll hear a bunch of clicks that slow down. They go, it'll go dit, 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 like that as uh, pressure is built up. Give it a little gas. Come on, baby. Come on, it's 60 degrees. Out. Right, my tack uh, recently stopped working. Good oil pressure. The tack probably stopped working because somebody, uh, when I bought this car, the battery was installed backwards. And I fixed most of the electrical parts that got damaged, but uh, recently the tack stopped working. Okay, I mean, listen to her, she's running great. <laughs> Okay, let's let it warm up a little bit. I just lifted both pistons. Let me get away from the car here. I lifted both pistons. There's a little button you can press underneath. There's a little, I'll show you. Right here. See that? Now I lifted both pistons and the RPMs dropped. That means I'm running too lean. to the engine. Ready? Three, two, one. See that? That's no good. I'll do the 
the front one. Same thing. Three, two, one. No good. So I'm going to open both idle screws a half a turn and see if that makes any change. Okay, I opened the screws. I, I'm sorry, I turned the screws in. The air fuel screw a half a turn and now watch what happens. Three, two, one. The RPM stay the same. So before the RPMs decrease. So we're almost there. I'm gonna open them another half a turn so I can get the RPMs to increase and then settle down and we should be good. Okay, I think I have them where they're uh, working now. See that? It increases. But it didn't go back down, so maybe this is too rich. It's on the other side here. Slightly. This one I'm going to leave alone. This one might be too rich, the back one. I think my spring is too weak because it's not holding the piston down. Look. I can push the piston down, so I'm going to have to look at that. Let's try the back one. That one, I can't push down. This one, I can. So I'm going to have to look at that. So I, I'm probably going to have to open these up next time, pull the tops off, the dampers, and change the springs in here, because it's not keeping this piston down, see? Until then, oh, hold on, let's check the, uh, the balancing, hold on. Okay, we're going to see if the carbs are synchronized. That's about one and a half by the back. About one and a half. So they're pretty synchronized. I don't have to adjust the uh, idle screws, which would be these screws here. The, the higher ones, not the lower ones. The lower ones are for the choke. The higher ones are for the uh, idle. Okay. We're going to take it for a drive now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Oh, one more thing. Once I put the air focus on here, it's going to be a little bit more restrictive, so the idle may come down a little bit more when I put the air filters back on. I had a tack still dead. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Little by little, we'll get it. Okay, everybody. Just doing what I did. Listen how smooth this car is. I can't believe it. Look, look at this. I can't believe it. Just, just by uh, doing what I just did, I showed you what I did. And thank you for the other um, YouTubers. Uh, I'm a noob at MGs. I mean, I, I got my TR7 going, but I'm a noob at this car. But the carbs are similar. It's hard to shift. I'm holding the camera. But listen to this thing. I think I did a pretty good job. I mean, I don't even know how old this motor is, you know? It's purring. It is purring like a kitten.
Wow. Listen to that. Wow. I don't even want to put the air filters on. I got to slow down because my brakes ain't the greatest. Wow. I feel like I have a brand new MGB. Holy crap. This shouldn't be. This should not be. Okay. I'm going to put the air filters on and ruin everything. No. I'm just kidding. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed my little drive around the neighborhood here. Beautiful sunny day. Okay. Bye. Okay. Continuing, I'm going to put on the air filter assembly two assemblies, the air filters, and uh, I just want to shout out a big thanks to the eBay seller who has 100% feedback that sold me these uh, two filters for my year MGB and the table in his uh, auction even uh, showed that these are the right ones for my MGB. Well, guess what? They're not. So I, I, I messaged them and I said, you, these filters don't fit. The inside diameter is too small. These, this is less than two, less than three inches inside diameter. These are just under three and a half, almost three and a half inches. And why? Because these have to fit inside. Notice they fit. They fit inside the Wix 42147. That's your correct filter, guys and gals. And look, I tried to put that in, and it just sits right on top. So, thank you, eBay seller. And he was kind enough to message me back and say, well, you could return them if it's inside our return window. Well, I bought these like five months ago, and his return window is 30 days. So, thank you for taking my money. Okay. So, here you go. I'm going to put these on now. Fit nicely. My hardware. Okay, I'll let you know how it turns out when I'm done. So like I said, I, I'm a noob at MGBs. I've had this car for over a year now. But she's a beauty. Look at that. Come on. Okay. So, and I'm like, how do you get the filters in here? They don't fit. So, uh, long story short, you just have to pry this plate off. Stick a screwdriver in there. See that? Little crack there. Little space. Flathead screwdriver, pry this off, and you could fit your air filter in. There you go. I just pried that off. Pried right off. You stick your air filter in. Nice. Nice and happy. <laughs> Get any dust out. Make sure it clears the holes. It should clear the holes. Okay. Then we're gonna just uh, press that, press this part back in. Okay. I gotta put the camera down to do that. So I'm gonna do the other side too. Not sure what this is for, but I'll just leave it there for now. All right, the filters are in, and I press the. You just press these, tap them with a little hammer, press them back in. Now the hardware buildup is, here you go, there's a big bolt, flat washer. Flat washer goes on the outside, and then there's a rubber shoulder washer here. See that? That goes on the outside, but this sleeve goes on the inside, so you take that off. See? That goes in there. This goes on the this goes on the inside of the air filter. So you take those off. And here you go, here's your build up again. Bolt head flat washer, shoulder washer. There you go. That goes in there. Flip it around. Here you go, here's what it looks like from the inside. And these spacers, sleeves, whatever you want to call them. 
go like this, okay? They get kind of pressed, pressed inside. I don't know if they get pressed inside. I'm not sure if they get pressed inside there or not. And then I'm not sure which way this goes. I'm not sure if those little holes are up or, or down. So I'm going to check that out now in the car. Okay, don't forget there's a gasket here too. So this is going to face out into the air filter. Because there's a gasket on the inside as well. And it goes like this. Line up the holes. Be something like that. Okay. There you go. That's perfect. And yes, the sleeve should come. You have to push the sleeve in. In through the rubber shoulder washer. See? It comes flush. Flush to the shoulder washer. Then you put in your your bolt like that okay okay so uh, then this piece here goes like this there's the bolts oh where's the other one it's hard to do this with one hand but someday I'll get a tripod or something well there's one coming through and then you screw it right in. There's one assembly. Okay? You got that? Good. Okay. I have these in. Thread them by hand first. Now the back one, the, the intake is on top. Otherwise you're not going to fit it, I don't think. I'm guessing at this one, I'm pretty sure the intake should be on top. I mean, there's a lot of aftermarket ones, but nothing's going to filter better than these, uh, the stock ones. I don't care what people tell you. And there's the nice filter. All right, I hand tightened them. And you just use your, this is a 13 millimeter. I'm not going to tighten them just in case I need to adjust them so make sure you thread them by hand first snug them down not too tight so there you go so I'm not going to tighten them yet I'm just uh, snugging them down in case I gotta move it okay then there's a collar here that joins the two filters. I'll show you that. Okay, here's the collar. It's got a ridge in the middle. That just goes right here. Perfect. See? My battery's running dead. I'm at 5%. So I'm just going to put the other one on and show you the finished product. Okay, finishing up. That's what everything should look like. Snug these down. They gotta be tight, but not too tight. Okay, once again, um, I use the Wix 42147, which comes with two filters, so only buy one, otherwise you're going to get four. Okay, 42147 Wix. Of course, it has the three and a half inch uh, inner diameter. Let's walk over to the car 
which I'm going to drive. I just charged my battery. And uh, I just want to show you the finished air filter assemblies. There you go. One snout going out the back on the high side. One snout coming out the front on the low side. Joined together by the, the rubber coupler there. Now just to uh, let's reiterate, this car was stumbling on acceleration. It had like zero power off idle. Like it starts, it started perfectly, closed the, you know, shut off the choke, it idled perfectly. Um, but it stumbled when accelerating. It was horrible. It was horrible. Until you got past like 2,000, 2,500 RPM. Then, then she smoothed out. So, um, at the beginning of the video, I adjusted the air fuel mixture. And that's all I had to do to solve that problem of the uh, stumbling on acceleration. Now, I don't know if... You know, you're lucky enough to have such a simple problem as me, but uh, that solved my problem. So, just wanted to show you the finished air filter assemblies. I use the wicks, other people make them. Uh, the wicks comes in a two pack, and uh, it's good to go. I don't have to worry about dirt and dust and getting to these carburetors because they're working great now. All right, everybody. Thanks for spending a Friday morning with me working on the MG. A couple just went by and the gentleman kind of veered away from his significant other to take a look at the MG. I didn't like these cars when I was growing up, to be honest with you. I'm a muscle car guy. You know, I got the muscle cars. But now, I just uh, wanted to experience something different, you know? So I got the TR7, and I got the MGB, and uh, just more than enough fun. Okay, everybody. Take care of those cars. And thank you to the guy uh, on YouTube who, uh, who showed me how to set the HIF44 carburetors up. He, he really went through them in crazy detail. He's got this crazy yellow Mini with a 1.1 liter, something like that. And uh, he speaks with an accent. And on one of his videos, he apologized for it being too technical. It wasn't too technical at all. It was a great video. And and he helped me, you helped me get my MG running there, good buddy. So thanks for your wonderful video. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.